It's Monday, January 8, 2018, and it's time to review five of the most outrageous, infuriating, or just plain baffling things that have happened lately. It's your Face Palm Five. Let's count them down. Number one, new book seems to confirm what we already suspected about Trump. Just in case you haven't been paying attention for the last year, a book was just published detailing what most of us knew already, that the Trump White House is a disorganized shit show, and Donald Trump has no business whatsoever being president of the United States. The book is Fire and Fury Inside the Trump White House by Michael Wolff. Based on hundreds of interviews conducted by Wolf, plus time he spent observing operations in the Trump presidential campaign and later the West Wing, the book includes scenes that would be utterly unbelievable if they were about any other president. But being about Trump, they're pretty much what we expected. Trump himself didn't expect to win the election and was shell-shocked by his victory. Nearly all of Trump's staff and closest advisors believe him to be unfit for the office. Trump is uninterested in the job and would rather spend time golfing or watching TV. Trump's ignorance, apathy, and lack of personal conviction render him easily swayed by the opinions and agendas of those around him. I mean, is any of that surprising? It's horrifying. This man is the president of the United States, for Christ's sake. But it can't be that shocking at this point. The most explosive line in the book is former Trump strategist Steve Bannon being quoted as saying Donald Trump Jr.'s meeting with Russians during the campaign was treasonous. And that's not exactly news either. The Trump campaign likely colluded with the Russians to swing the election in their favor? You don't say. I should note before moving on that the author of the book, Michael Wolff, is not exactly the portrait of journalistic integrity. He's been accused of fabricating details in previous books, and he's also been critical of how the media handles Trump in the past, so a grain of salt might be wise here. The White House line so far has been, Wolf is just making all of this stuff up, but keep in mind, that is the White House's response to every unflattering story reported about Trump, even the stuff that is irrefutable, which is most of it. Number two, Sessions readies for a crackdown on marijuana. U.S. Attorney General and right-wing hero Jeff Sessions is about to uphold the proud legacy of his ancestors and strike a blow for states' rights. What's that? He's about to do the exact opposite of that? That can't be right. Shockingly, though it seems to go against the deeply held conviction that individual states can govern themselves without those jack-booted thugs from the federal government breathing down their necks, Sessions has rescinded Justice Department guidelines discouraging enforcement of federal anti-marijuana laws in states where marijuana has been legalized. Oh, it's a drug thing, so never mind. Your reckoning is at hand, you dope-smoking hippies! Marijuana has been legal for medicinal and recreational purposes for years in many states. Possession and cultivation of small amounts of marijuana just became legal in California on January 1st, thanks to a ballot initiative approved in last year's election. Sessions' move to crack down on marijuana has attracted opposition from the left and the right. The ACLU has vowed to fight him, and so has Republican Senator Cory Gardner, who has promised to block confirmation of new Justice Department appointees if Sessions follows through with federal anti-marijuana enforcement. Gardner, incidentally, represents Colorado, a state where marijuana was legalized for recreational use in 2012. All kidding aside, while it's tempting to use this story to accuse Sessions of hypocrisy, he's really acting in perfect accordance with his values. When right-wingers like Sessions say they support states' rights, they don't mean states' rights to legalize drugs. They mean states' rights to enact policies that are harmful to non-white people. That's what it meant in the 1860s. That's what it means today. That's all it ever means. Like Michael Wolff, Jeff Sessions is only demonstrating that which we already know to be true. Number three, Trump administration working to undermine Fair Housing Act. And don't forget, just because they believe states have the right to hurt people of color, that doesn't mean the federal government shouldn't get in on it too. 
The Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, now led by Trump appointee Ben Carson, is delaying implementation of an Obama-era rule designed to fight segregation. The rule requires cities seeking HUD funding to analyze neighborhood segregation and create programs to improve conditions for people of color who have been negatively affected by segregation. While intentional racial segregation has been illegal in this country for decades, many neighborhoods are still segregated segregated along racial lines due to other factors, which disproportionately disadvantages non-white communities. The deadline for many cities to comply with the rule was originally in April, but HUD is now pushing that deadline back to 2020. Fair housing advocates have feared all along that under the Trump administration, HUD would turn away from its responsibility to monitor and encourage programs intended to address problems related to segregation. The delaying of this deadline is an indication that their fears were well-founded. Number four, Infowars sells pro-Trump children's book. Well, after all, it makes perfect sense. According to Michael Wolff, Trump is widely considered by his own staff to be essentially a child. So why not make him the hero of his own children's book? And if that children's book also just happens to be racist, fascist, conspiracy theorist propaganda, so be it. The book is called Thump, The First Bundred Days. It depicts Trump as an adorable bunny who is elected president, befriending a frog who has shown croaking keck along the way. Hey, remember when Trump was enthusiastically embraced by white supremacist trolls and he didn't seem bothered by it at all? Wasn't that adorable? The book is published by Post Hill Press and distributed by Simon & Schuster, the same company that signed Milo Yiannopoulos to a quarter of a million dollar book deal. I mean, is anyone paying attention over there? The book is being sold by Infowars. One of the book's authors was recently a guest of Alex Jones, who praised the book as something parents can use to teach their children that Trump is the hero we need. The book also makes light of the Access Hollywood tape, where Trump was caught bragging about his history of sexual assault, so parents can use the book to explain to their kids why that's no big deal, too. And now it's time for the segment devoted to some of the other things Donald Trump has done recently to disgrace the presidency and embarrass and or endanger the United States and the world. It's number five, the further misadventures of Lord Dampnut. Please keep in mind as always, the following is not a complete list. He dissolved his bogus commission to investigate voter fraud, blaming the failure of the commission on Democrats refusing to cooperate when actually it was 44 out of 50 states that refused to cooperate. He fired all of the remaining members of the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV AIDS without notice or explanation. He asked for $18 billion to build his wall along the southern border. And he didn't ask for this money from Mexico, which he promised repeatedly would pay for it, but from our very own United States Congress. His administration announced plans to open up areas off the coasts of Florida and California to offshore oil drilling. He took credit for 2017 being the safest year for commercial aviation on record. Yes, he took credit for planes not crashing. And how can we forget, Trump tweeted a reminder to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un that his nuclear button was much bigger and more powerful than Kim's. This is at least the third time Trump has used Twitter to threaten to start a nuclear war. And threatening violence is a violation of Twitter's terms of service, though apparently they make an exception when the one doing the threatening is powerful enough to threaten the lives of millions of people at once. Good on you, Twitter. That's five. Speak out, act out, resist, look after each other. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel with a small monthly donation through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives 
to become a patron of this channel for as little as $1 a month. But if you can afford it and you think I'm worth it to go a little bit above and beyond, like say $5 a month or more, you can take advantage of some cool extra perks in my Patreon campaign, including for those pledging $5 a month or more, a shout out at the end of the Face Palm 5, just like my newest $5 plus per month patron, William Gary Cannon. Thank you, William Gary, very, very much for your support. Thanks to all of you for your support, whether you are a patron at whatever level or whether you just watch the videos and like and share and you've subscribed, whatever form your support takes, thank you so very, very much for it. And I'll see you next time.